Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So I come across this radio recently, and this one is badged as an Abri AR318. Now apparently, according to the specs, it's a dual band mobile radio with a maximum power output of 25 watts. It covers the two meter and the 70 centimeter handbands within the frequency ranges of 136 to 174 megahertz and 400 to 490 megahertz. Now it's quite a small radio and it weighs around 500 grams. So not exactly a beast of a radio, but in this video we'll test out, receive and transmit to see how good or bad this radio is. Now I've seen this radio before quite some time ago, badged as a different manufacturer. And I'm sure I saw some reviews complaining about the extreme low power output. Maybe they had a 40 radio or maybe Abri has improved this radio. Now there's no VFO or memory change rotary control. All this is changed via push buttons, whether they're on the front panel of the radio or on the included microphone. Now the microphone connection is an RJ45 socket and this also doubles up as a programming port. Of course, you do need the correct programming cable, which I'll link below. On the rear, there's just a 3.5 millimeter socket, which is used for an external speaker, along with an SO239 socket for the antenna. A fan is also attached to the rear of the chassis. The fan itself does not run all the time, but it does kick in if you start transmitting for a period of time. Whether this is timed or has a PA temperature sensor, I'm unsure about but it does work and when it kicks in, it's actually fairly quiet. The power cable that comes with a radio has a vehicle adapter plug, which I guess would make it nice and easy to install and take out of a vehicle quite quickly. Now, the specifications mention that the highest current draw at 13.8 volts DC is just five amps when transmitting and around 300 milliamp when listening or receiving. So perfectly in range, for most vehicle accessory adapter ports. The included microphone is terminated with an RJ45 plug and the mic itself appears to be okay. Now it's a bit small and it has a load of front facing buttons, which are actually illuminated when plugged into the radio and powered on. Now the buttons can be used to direct dial a frequency or pretty much control the radio, like change VFO, enter memory mode, or even make changes within the menu. Now the PTT button appears to be one of those clicky switches. Not entirely sure how long that would last, but it does work, at least for now. Now what is interesting and something I was not expecting is that as you can see, we have two VFOs shown on the screen. Now both of these VFOs can receive at the same time. So essentially you can listen to two frequencies at the same time with the audio coming out of the same speaker. Although when transmitting on one VFO, the other is muted, so there's no crossband repeat function as far as I can tell. The settings menu, which is activated by pressing the menu button twice, is where you can change how the radio operates, like setting CTCSS or DCS tones, enabling or disabling the menu beeps, or even changing power levels. Now, as you scroll through the menu, you'll come across a setting labeled as COMP, C -O -M -P, which is what I believe is either a compander or compressor. Now this does actually affect the transmitted audio, and in my opinion turned on actually sounds better, but I'll show you how that sounds in a moment. Now going through the menu, we get to an area where we can change the font color of the upper and lower VFOs independently. Now there's nothing else really worth mentioning in the menu as it's all pretty standard, but here's how the transmitted audio sounds. This is M0 DQW testing, M0 DQ testing Abri AR318. This is with narrow, narrow setting and compander turned off. This is uh, M0 DQW with the compander turned on. This is with the compander turned on M0 DQW testing. Okay, so let's test the power output. Here we have the radio set up to a power meter and then the power meter is plugged into a dummy load. Now the radio is actually being powered by an anchor power bank at the moment, and this provides a 12 volt DC output. On two meters at 145 megahertz, we see an output power of around 16.5 watts with the radio set to high power. Up on 70 centimeters at 435 megahertz, we see an output of around 19 watts. 
Okay, so that's a smidge under what's advertised, which is pretty normal from where these radios originate from. However, I've redone this test, but with the radio plugged into my 13.8 volt main jack power supply. And well, here's the results. On 70 centimeter at 435 megahertz, it's a smidge over 20 watts. And then down on the two meter band at 145 megahertz, we see an output of around 17 and a half watts. So not really that much difference between using a 12 volt supply or a 13.8 volt supply. Now there is a dedicated programming software application available for free to download, which appears to work well. Now assuming you have the correct programming cable, it should work pretty smoothly. I actually had to purchase the programming cable, which I got from Amazon. Now these are only around five pounds, so it's not exactly expensive. Now I would recommend though to use Chirp to program this Adbury AR318. And that's because of all the brilliant features that it has. Now one feature I always mention and absolutely love is the repeater book integration. This means you do not have to manually program hundreds of repeaters into the radio. Chirp will download these for you by location and it's super simple to copy these to the radio. The last test to perform is to check out how clean the transmitted signal is on the two meter and 70 centimeter bands. Well, some of you will most likely not care about this test, but to me, it tells me a lot about the radio's manufacturer, and that's whether or not they care about the product that they're selling. So first is the spectrum analyzer plot for the two meter band. At first glance, I thought my tiny SA Ultra was broken because any harmonics were either non-existent or extremely low, but make of that what you will. Now this was definitely a surprising result for sure. So then I tested the 70 centimeter band and surely this must be dirty, right? Well, again, I'm quite shocked. It's showing here that we have a pretty much clean transmitter coming from this Abri AR318. Now technically what this means is that whoever designed this radio have actually thought about the filters that have been used in the radio to make sure that the transmitted signal is not splurging on multiple frequencies at the same time, which could potentially cause interference to other services. It's also a legal requirement in certain countries for these to be a certain level below the main signal, i.e. the fundamental. And according to this result on the tiny SA Ultra, it appears to be well within specification. However, I'm sure some of you will want to comment. I do know that this is not a professional lab grade test device but it does give us an indication of how well this radio has been filtered. I knew you saw what was in Ukraine. He was, he was on the Russian border. <laughs> he lives on the, near the Russian border. So I, was, I, I worked here and that was nice. You OK, Dave? And uh, OK on the amp. Yeah, it's, the thing is with a 705, you know, it's all right if it's your only radio in the shack. An amp's brilliant, you know. Now, at the time of making this video, this radio costs around $60, which is pretty cheap compared to some other radios that we see on the market. I got this from Banggood, and if you're interested, I'll leave a link down in the video description so you can go and check it out yourself. There's also an option you can select where the radio will come with a vehicle antenna as well, including a mount and some coax. So if you don't have one, you can also order that at the same time. Anyway, guys, if you've got this radio or even the other versions of these radios, let us know down in the comments below. It'd be interesting to know how you get along with this radio. And if you've tested this yourself using a much more sophisticated spectrum analyzer, then let me know down in the comments as well. It'd be interesting to see what your results were too. Until the next video, thanks so much for watching. Massive shout out to my patrons and YouTube subscribers. Without you, some of these videos would not be possible. Until the next video, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.